Thanks about that. I was me. <laughs> Shout out to Casual Economist. Shout out to Wayne Wallace taking care of me. <laughs> like, I'm not used to these PBO working sessions. Shout out to uh, Before the Billions. He got me thinking about doing a working session. So uh, once again, glad y'all could join me. We're going to do a couple of policies, re policy reviews and kind of walk through. Um, this is going from revision four to re revision five. So we're going to just walk through how you would do a policy review, how you would update the policy and what does entry level policy people make? Shout out to women in Linux. They always show the ND numbers. So I'm gonna take out the name. We're gonna look up a couple remote jobs. Everybody's trying to get on that remote job train. So we're gonna look at a high level, go to ND, look at a couple of remote jobs for policy people and see what that's really all about. Like I said, something a little different. Um, the other side, management side, GRC side, not as technical. Once again, but if you got any questions, just drop, drop them in the chat uh, and we can go over them. Uh, give me one if you can hear me. I think I unmute myself. Give me one if you can hear me. Let's see. Oh, man, I need Friday to hurry up and get here. I need Friday to hurry up and get here. So, like I said, I appreciate that, Ellis. So, once again, let's hit it real quick. Um, let's see. So if you go to, I have a compliance playlist. So I've stole the slides from my compliance playlist, uh, which goes which goes over many more compliance. So we talked about NIST 853 revision five, NIST public special publication. You see it at the top, security, privacy, and controls. Because a lot of times people are in silos when you think about project management, uh, admin, SOC. Threat hunting, red team, blue team, purple team, uh, DBAs, programmers, DevSecOps, DevOps. Where do you get those security requirements? You get the security requirements from these documents right here, right? From a high level, then when you get to hardening, but the overview and the, the requirements come from like NIST, HIPAA, FERPA. NIST is real big in the government. It's kind of like the de facto standard of that. So what is it? Provides a catalog of security, privacy controls for all United States federal information, EPSERTs related to national security. NIST stands for National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is a non-regulatory agency of the United States Department of Commerce, develops, issues, standards, guidelines, and other publication for federal agencies, right? I like that federal money, right? And I like that. <laughs> I like that government money i always say tax money is infinite so i just i stayed in the federal space for ooh, probably 20 years and i finally got out so but there it is the other one uh fisma federal information security and modernization act so those are kind of what we're going to talk about most government agencies and a lot of states using this and it, a lot of um private companies use lists i appreciate that wayne Wallace. A lot of private companies use NIST because they bid on federal work, right? To get that federal paycheck. So if you're talking about Booz Allen, the top four, Arthur Anderson, Price Waterhouse Cooper, they all use NIST because they all in big federal clients. Booz Allen uh, does a lot of work for the IRS, so they're in this. So this is a good um, federal compliance and security. Even if you're on a technical side, and I'm a do a couple of videos where you take NIST and show how you apply them to a database or web server, app server, or even programming for DevOps, right? So that's why we're talking about NIST once again uh, on the compliance side, GR, GRC and risk, right? So we're going to touch on the policies today. So here's the policies which are derived from the families, security families. So each one of these security families will have a policy, right? So we're going to look at the families, then we're going to drill in one and actually look at a policy and what 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 that would look like in real life, right? So from a security perspective and a security program, right? These are the, all the uh, families you would have to secure for any company, government agency, right? Now you're going to have high, medium, low. So some of this you will do a lot of this. Or if you're low, you might only do a little of this, right? But you're going to have some in each one of these, right? 
that's access control awareness and training everybody's get training out of an accountability assessment configuration management contingency planning identification and authentication incident response maintenance media protection physical environment right a lot of people forget physical right you talking about fencing webcams um i worked a place that had armed guards <laughs> so people forget about the physical i know we're always talking about um physical uh protection planning program management person personnel security pii uh processing and transparency the big ones that uh, came out those risk assessment service uh system and service acquisition system and information integrity and supply chain risks right because caseas got hit uh a lot of people were getting hit in the supply chain so the big one that got updated was risk assessment and supply chain management are you reviewing all your subcontractors your third party anybody else you're sending data to right because most companies send data out to be printed shredded uh you're paying people you send us stuff to the irs for taxes you send us stuff to um child welfare so all those programs help secure all that data right and that's when you're talking about running a compliance program once again if you got any security questions put them in the box we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, policies uh from a NIST perspective the other part of uh, cybersecurity, which is the paperwork, I always put the, all that on the side of management, right? Because management, you know, when you go sign, you got to do your your uh, standard use policy, what you're going to use your laptop for. You got to sign that you're going to return it. You got to sign what you're going to um, use a computer for. You can only use it for work, right? So all those are the policies and procedures here that you have to sign up, right? Because a lot of that's from a legal perspective. I'm gonna interview a couple lawyers because that's the weird thing. I never thought I would be on phone with lawyers every day, right? Because you're talking about terms and conditions, which are in here. Um, when you do vendors, you should have security language in your vendor contracts because they should be at the same security you're at, or you need to understand what security they're gonna be at. And that contract says what they need to do to keep doing your business so you can break the contract, all right? So so these are um once again all the security families in this 800-53 talking a little bit about grc uh this is one of the security families all right access control and over here depending on uh what level of classification your data at right we just talked about low medium or high uh most people are at moderate all right because high means life or death so there's very few programs where you're gonna do life or death nuclear hospitals um manifest if you're moving chemicals will be high um any type of data once again i used to do a lot of work with the irs uh FERPA for education all that stuff that moderate right because theoretically nobody's gonna um die from it or or have death so that's why the majority of your stuff is at at moderate here the weird thing is if you look now modern and higher on a lot of the same families because uh china and russia have been hacking our system so they're actually been <laughs> giving you more requirements on uh modern so these are the things that we're going to look at in a security policy so we have an access control policy and if we're moderate all right these are the things we need to have in our policy how are we going to do account management how are we going to automate that uh temporary and emergency account if you have a dba that needs extra rights or you have an emergency where somebody else need right how do you uh do that right so that's the technical side but in your policy you need to be describing that process why auditors come in or if you get hacked if you don't have these documented in policy your fine's going to be bigger so that's one reason uh policy plays on um prominent in the role because policy tells you from a management perspective what's required from all your employees right because if you don't have management backing it's hard to do things right it's hard to get things pushed so policy says from a company's perspective and a management perspective 
what do we need to put in a policy to dictate from our employees then our system administrator our programmers what do we expect for them to have in this architecture to make sure that once again it's secure right so those are the things in the moderate level that we need to see in a policy then now here um 13 was disable accounts for high risk individuals access enforcement so when you think about that what identity access management uh multi-factor authentication tokens from a network perspective what ports are you let in and out right because that's access enforcement what ports you let in how you let people in vpn right so that's coming from a policy down to a technical level on how you're going to implement that right on the technical side so once again that's why you need policies because it's going to flow down from management then that's going to turn into requirements for you to do on the technical side so once again drop any questions in there once again we're digging in on a policy level uh from this once again out in the storage i like this because it gives you a discussion that helps you dig into it organization consider the types of auditing to be performed and audit process requirements when allocating out of storage allocating sufficient out of storage reduces the likelihood of capacity being exceeded and resulting in there right so part of this can um be in the policy then the other part of policy what is the procedures that's going to implement that policy right because a lot of times at a policy you're going to talk about you need out of storage it needs to be secure it needs to be held for a certain amount of time then the procedure is going to say uh we're going to use splunk we're going to set up capacity for at least a year and six months we're going to encrypt it right and the procedure is going to tell you how you're going to implement that policy but once again you got to get the policy out so management can push that down to everybody else so once again that's the sub family of that Then that shows you AC1 tells you, and this is on all the security families, you got to have a policy and procedure to be uh, in compliant with NIST 853R5. So you got to have an access policy and procedure, right? So we're going to, once again, look at what a policy would look like for uh, NIST 800 53. And if you want to see, I did a, <laughs> this was a separate video where I walked through the requirements of NIST 853R5, right, from a program compliance standpoint. Now, once again, we're going to actually start looking at a policy to dig down in there. Let's see, what do we else have in there? Once again, more uh, controls on there. And when you look at this, they, we were looking at some of that, right? Account management, uh, system, uh, automated system account management, temporary and emergency, and you should be able to disable the account super quick, right? So um, if somebody hasn't logged in in 30, 60 days, you should automatically disable their account. Or if somebody goes on vacation and they're not working, if you're at a, if you're at a, a super mature level, you can disable that account till a person gets back. So if somebody would actually try to hack their account while they're on vacation, the account will be disabled and they wouldn't be able to get into it. Right? I don't know anybody actually doing that in real life, but it's a cool thing. They said to make your attack surface smaller, right? So uh, once again, if you got any questions on uh, anything IT or security, just drop them in the chat. So let's look at uh let's look out shout out to women in Linux. We're gonna look at the indeed shout out to Gabe. <laughs> I can never see you on my stream side, man. I gotta figure out what's going on with my rest my restream and Gabe. Shout out to Gabe. He knows about those policies when you work for big company, they'd be over policying you. <laughs> but once again, when you're doing federal work, this 800 is um good what's up brother michael that's uh used throughout the government in the federal space um like i said i used to do a lot of irs work uh dod fisma a lot of that uses um this 800-53 so once again let me switch over i'm gonna get my um my women in linux on oh 
I'm about to end the stream on accident. I better get it together, man. Struggle streaming. So let's look at the Indeed and see what. Um, make sure that's coming up. Okay, if I can't see you on my uh, restream side, so you're going to have to hit me up on Struggle Security if you need anything. Well, next, I'll be checking both. I'll take that back, Gabe. I'll be checking both. But once again, I looked up a few. I looked up a few entry-level um, jobs on Indeed that was remote. Make that a little bigger. So what I did, I said NIST and policies. I said don't bring up anything with firewall because firewall policies were hot. Once again, these are entry-level uh, remote work. So you can be remote, but the primary jobs in Chicago, 85. So let's look at requirement. PCI, there's the NIST, information security, full-time healthcare, a little high trust in SOC 2. NIST is in there. There's the NIST. So compliance, execute IT compliance plans to ensure internal SOC environments are high trust or SOC. Understand control framework, high trust NIST. So once again, these are um, entry level. I just pulled a couple out. So they wanted you to have the GCIH. That's a big one. Of course, ethical hacking. So I was going to get down to what they want. That's responsibilities. Ability to respond to technical alerts and incidents. Ability to trace down endpoints. Uh, they want a little networking, where I would talk about networking. SIM, PCAP, IDS. So even though it's technical, they want you to understand, like we're talking about those NIST requirements at the top. Incident response. Uh, responding at Escalation of incidents to a SOC that perform collection and triage, uh, do analysis on the alerts, um, stakeholders, including the global CISO. So once again, this, they want you to understand this, uh, you know, so even though you're doing SOC work, because once again, those are the requirements. Let me see if any more questions. Brother Michael's in there. So I know everybody's uh so if once you get GRC um accessor full time this 800 171 which is really the CMC and if you're um a commercial business trying to do government work that's 171 it's actually a subset of NIST uh, 800-53. So once again, you can Google that. There's some remote jobs looking for policy work. Uh, Faram Junior um, Cyber Analyst. Now, how are you a junior? You got a CISP. That's crazy. I think uh, Gabe talked about this a lot on his channel, right? Sometimes, um, I don't know how you have a junior. You a junior cyber analyst. Faram's the top, though. That's this 800-53. They want you to have the master's degree, a bachelor's, and be a junior. That's crazy, man. So we we talk about that a lot. That sometimes for me, the and we once again the job description doesn't match the requirements they're they're asking for. It. So um, once again, ton of a uh, few entry level jobs out there. I think it was thirty one. Totally dope from the mid levels. If you got two or three years, I think there was. 575 jobs for um, NIST policy in it, right, with other things. So let's peek at the policy. I just want to uh, look at the, um, indeed, look at a couple of those jobs. Shout out to Gabe. He walks through that on his channel a lot more than I do. So let's physically look at a policy. Um so when I used to freelance a lot more, which I don't anymore because I'm tired, <laughs> I used to, I created a batch of policies that I did when they were R4, right? And we were looking at that. So this is actually the access control policy. Let me make that a little bigger for me, the old people. <laughs> so you see right there, 
I had a template information security access policy. Then I could search for the organization name and their mission, right? And we were looking at the audit policy, but we're going to walk through this access policy and just highlight the things you would look at if you were actually doing an assessment of policies. Um, any um, assessment of risk you do, the first thing they ask for <laughs> are your policies and procedures, especially from a big company. Now, I'm I'm a tech guy. One of my favorite bosses says, "You you uh, <laughs> policy is never going to get you hacked, right? You can't hack a policy, right? But from a fine perspective, and when you come in to audit if you're going to pass or not, they always start with the policies, and that's what drive everything drives everything from a big corporation or those policies, right? So let's kind of walk through. Like I said, I, I'm probably going to cut on my memberships and. For my top membership, right? You, I'll give you those policies. Let's see, Peter. What's up, Peter <laughs> Investor? Glad you can join me. So let's look at up once again. This is a NIST policy. You, we saw the matrix. There are twenty families, so you have twenty policies and procedures that will match those families, right? And we go back and look. It was a uh, high, medium, and low, and depending on your policies and the classification of your data, right? That's going to show you your policy. So once again, let's look at a policy. So the purpose, the policy establishing enterprise access control, managing a risk from account access, monitoring, separation of duties, remote access through the uh, establishment of access control program. The access program helps or implements security best practices with regard to logical security account management and remote access right and i probably when i update these in real life i'm gonna put some cloud stuff in there right because everybody's got a piece of the cloud or going to the cloud or we're going to send their optional cloud right because even in the cloud you have access control i'm an aws so you have your aim you would set up your public and subnets right you wouldn't say that but from an access control and a logical security standpoint that's what all that is in the cloud, right? So we got that purpose. Then whatever your company is trying to do, are you selling widgets, a uh, nuclear power plant, trying to make a world a better, safer place, right? So you would put your kind of company purpose in here, right? Then what, what scope are you trying to do? A lot of times companies have multiple policies, right? So you, you can scope, they have a certain... Um, programs once again i did tax programs and other stuff so this scope could just be for your tax systems your hr systems or once again your whole organization right it just depends on where you at from a, a maturity standpoint in your company right so the scope of the policy is applicable to our information technology resources on operating by your organization any information not specified identified as property or other uh, parties that is transmitted to store it resources include email messages and files right i haven't updated these probably for seven years so once again we will put some uh cloud stuff in there aws azure um a lot of people are multi-clouds right so we would probably depending on what we do once again we would update the scope right so once again we're just kind of walking through what a basic policy would look like and how will we upgrade it from from what we were looking at with those security families the intent information security services be consistent with the best practices of your organization its intention is the policy establish access control and its business units to help implement best practices with regard to logical security account management remote access and once again i probably upgrade and put some cloud and some internet in there right so my goal probably over the next month is take this framework and get these updated for r5 right so if, if i wanted a freelance i would have these already packaged up i would go out and maybe charge four or five thousand dollars for the whole package right um a lot of small businesses do not have the proper policies they need to once again especially if you're trying to bid on federal work or, or do that type of work right so um once again the first thing you would look at um in an organization a lot of times uh for um 
assessment this 800 or a lot of times for a red team a lot of times people want to see the policies and procedures that um lets you do a red team or a pen test right a lot of times not a lot of times there's it i think it's in service and acquisition they have you should do a pen test right so in that policy it should say uh you can do a pen test uh what areas are you allowed to do a pen test two is what is your um exhibit and gabe shout out to gabe um there's got to be a um security language in there uh between you and the vendor doing the pen test right we trust gabe but we got to tell gabe this is the boundary this is what which you can do this is what you can't do you know gabe side gabe is gonna like i need a letter if a police roll up on me or fp hour or you come back later and i did something wrong i need a um i need a uh I need a contract saying, you know, what's the boundaries and I could do this, right? Because a lot of people be trying to sue you afterwards. <laughs> so we want to make sure that doesn't happen, right? So let's see. I can see. So let's get back on that uh, policy. So the intent, we talked about this. So a high-level policy, we just walked through those segments that were listed. And we're going to go back there. But let's go through AC1 access control what does that mean ac2 we looked at it account management we looked at it was wanted to be automated right <laughs> so in the old days you used to have to physically go on a database or physically go into a uh, active directory right now a lot of times they want to actually put that into some front end programs and it's going to um give you we call it job responsibility so if you're accounting it should give you the accounting system active directory in teams what what directors you need access to you want to automate that because if you're doing it manually you are gonna mess it up right so you want to try to automate that in your organization as much as possible right when they put in a ticket their manager should be able to click a button i'm hiring once again this is account and accounts receivable payable or this is a security analyst right junior so you should be able to hit a button and give it all the access it need and the on the other side it's coming up here you need to be able to de deactivate that account when it's no longer required and in the old days people used to miss stuff or they didn't do it and people would have access for two or three months once they left the company so you need to be able to deactivate that automatically too just as quickly as you did it but once again you need to have that in your policy so your tech guys know what the requirements they're working with all right notify the account managers when temporary accounts are no longer required when information assets are terminated or uh, usage or need no or need to share information right so as a manager I put their ticket in once that ticket gets done i should get an email saying uh this person deactivated all their requirements you know it does have to list the individual host but counting system done uh payroll done um if they had an inventory system done right so all that should be automated right then automated audit action the information system should audit all accounts creation modification and enabling disabling right that's your sim right all that information should flow down to the sim so if somebody <laughs> got hacked and somebody gave their self a high level privilege it should be in your sim and an automated audit action and once again you should on a periodic basis or at least annually review those accounts right so you need to send your supervisor or their manager saying there's all their employees this are the rights they have access to right so they should be able to go check a spreadsheet and say good 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 not good right so you need to be able to be review that especially since Caseus and all hacks people are really trying to enforce that but once again it has to be in your policy right so as you become a grc analyst right you would come in and you would look at their policies and you would go okay they got this good they got this or something's missing say if they didn't have separation duty at 875 that would be called a finding right and you would tell them you need to get that in your policy right um so they would have uh it's called a poem all the stuff they're missing in their policies you will write up a finding 
and give it to to their management and they know they need to fix it once again when i do assessments uh, a lot of times um policies depending on which one you you usually give them three months to fix it right before you come back and audit them right so and most bigger companies or even smaller companies are super good about fixing those once again if you got any questions just talking about policies on a, on the policy review something a little different we're gonna get on that management side gonna look at the policies right and remember these are the requirements the security people use these are requirements that the red team use once again in this policy you're gonna say what can a red team organization do for your company right to be in compliance right you don't want to go rogue right so in the policy would we'll say this is what we normally would test in a red team this is our uh, security artifact to the red team right and two you would time box them saying in the policy you need to give them a time frame when and not to do the red team right ac6 we know least privilege everybody talks to that must employ a concept belief privilege allowing only authorized access for users and process acting on behalf of users which are necessary to accomplish assigned tasks in accordance with the organization mission and business function authorized access to security functions non-privileged access for non-security people auditing use of privileged users prohibit non-privileged users from executing privileged functions right so all these are the things you have to once again from uh requirements um impacting your organization or make that happen right and most people are using archer hr system a lot of times you see when they put a button it's running playbooks behind the scenes like in um aws when you hit a button it'll put the user in give them once again for their job function give them access to an s3 bucket a certain linux certain windows certain folders in their groups right all of once again is but least privilege you just want to give them enough to do their job right in the old days people used to give everybody root because they couldn't figure it out then people would hack and steal right so once again least privilege this is a big one <laughs> unsuccessful logging attempt our organization business system must employ and enforce the limit a consecutive invalid long on attempts by user um, automatically locks the account or node for a particular time period locks the account or node until the release by the administrator delays and lets log on prompt so if a user logs in five times you can lock their account right um if it's a bruce force attack and somebody tries five times right then they can't keep trying right you lock the account a lot of people unlock it after a certain uh period of time so you try five times then i'll lock you out for an hour right or i try uh five times 20 times each time the next thing instead of an hour to be two hours right so it keeps pushing them out making them wait longer right so that's going to stop your your brute force attacks um hopefully after a couple times you're going to get an email or a lot of times too is from a playbook if you uh hit it five times and you up to five hours you just blocked it ip from your net why obviously that's a brute force attack right or somebody don't know what they're doing and right, so those are once again security requirements you need to get your um, i am people identity access management people to put in effect for your system right because a lot of times people ask me what's those requirements where are you getting those requirements or what do i do as a small company i say well let me give you some of this NIST eight then we can get you started as a small company we'll go back looking at there i wouldn't give them the mediums i would give them the lows right you're a small company you need to grow into security right we just give them to them so um we'll read a couple more and that'll give you once again the just the basis of a policy so you as a grc person when you review policies this is what you're reviewing right uh ac session lock we talked about that uh business must prevent further access by initiating a session lock after 120 minutes of inactivity upon receiving a request from the user so if a person doesn't work for that you want to basically 
uh, kill their session. Why? If a hacker's in your system, sometimes they can jump on other sessions, right? Or do session spoofing, right? If there's um, sessions out there not being used. So that's one reason you want to kill it. Once again, security requirement, session termination. So that's basically at a high level what a policy is, right? Mm -hmm. You saw, I mean, we about to go back and look at that. Uh, PBR recently attended a seminar on cognitive cybersecurity. Uh, have you heard of this area? I have not heard of that area of engineering cannabis. Uh, I have not heard of cognitive cybersecurity. Shout out to engineering cannabis. <laughs> I have not. So let's look at that family real quick again, and uh, then we could just talk about a high level. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Well, those were some of the actual um, things we were looking at policy. Once again, we would use this list to make sure all these things were in the um, access control policy. We looked at automated system account, automated temporary and emergency account, disabling, automated action inactivity. So once again, you need the policy because that's going to be your security requirements for your your system, right? A lot of people get confused and like, where are these requirements coming out? Are we bringing them out the sky? No, nah, we're taking the NIST 853R5. These are the controls we're giving into each department, right? Because Session is going to be in your database. Session is going to be in your web app. Sessions are going to be in your Windows. Session is going to be in your Linux, right? So even though this is one policy, when you're implementing each one of those tech domains have session in it, right? You as a security analyst needs to understand these and how they actually flow down into your tech, tech stack, right? But the cool thing is we looked at some junior jobs. You can just go and look at the policy, right? Okay, is all a policy in there? Then you get a senior or mid-level guy works with those individual teams to make sure those security requirements are being met right and that's the hidden gem a lot of times is you don't have to be super technical in each one of those domains right because you're going to work with the dba you're going to work with the system administrator you're going to work with um the security people on those sessions right you're going to work with the linux guys they're really the SME. you as a security person just needs to make sure they are meeting those requirements. Like you said, after 120 minutes, your session gets killed, right? You have an automated way to create a Linux account, you, uh, AWS account, Azure account, if you're doing a multi-cloud, right? So these requirements is what you got to make sure it gets implemented. Because what's up, CL? Because these requirements, and that's what CL does, you know, we always say we delegate, right? So you delegate that to the SA, you delegate that to the Linux guy, you delegate uh, when you kill a session. So you got to make sure your SQL server is doing it, your Oracle database doing it. Now we're doing uh, MongoDB if you're doing no SQL. All of those technologies got sessions in them, right? So you got to figure out, okay, after 120 minutes, 60 minutes, 15 minutes, right what is that and once again you need to get that implemented and that's hard sometimes sometimes they're going to say we can't do it because it's going to break the app right which is fine right so now we got to do a poem document that what else can you do to make sure that control is um being enforced or being has or something else is doing it right that's when you get more into a senior uh security analyst once again we're talking about a junior analyst coming in he would just look at the um the policy and just making sure from a NIST 800 53, we looked at it from a moderate standpoint. These are the things we're looking at and, and a, getting accomplished from a policy standpoint. And once again, the policy is the requirements that goes to the tech side, right? Because a lot of people were like, well, we're secure. I'm like, what, what, what compliance are you saying you're secure with? <laughs> right? Just because you say we're secure, right? you need to have a compliance to so you can actually validate you you're secure you can say oh, i'm doing mfa i got encryption i'm doing uh vpn 
okay, what are you validating that against? You could just be hard in one section of your infrastructure and another whole section like the database isn't taken care of, right? So that's why you need a security program. And once again, those requirements come from your policy, right? And so that's what we're kind of doing from a working session is looking at your control family, seeing these in there, right? Then figuring out what is your policy, right? And CL will tell you, sometimes you get a lot of pushback. Sometimes your team don't want to do that that type of uh, security. But the cool thing is, is you like, it's not me. We're NIST and we're doing uh, FERPA for education, uh, IRS Pub 1075 for taxes, FISMA for DOD. They all reference NIST. So you can say we are out of compliance for the uh, federal agency uh, we're doing business with or working with or sending data to because they're going to tell you to get this data, do this type of work. You got to be NIST 853. Um, CMC, NIST 171, HIPAA, high trust, right? They're going to give you your compliance. So whatever that compliance is, NIST is super high. You got to build policies from an organizational perspective to get those requirements, right? And that's, once again, I think that's a hidden gem where a lot of people, once again, you don't have to be super technical. You need to be super detailed, <laughs> right? So, because there's a ton of paperwork. Um, it's easily could be if you do a SSP with it and policies and procedures, PSC, I man, you can easily be at a couple thousand pages of just paperwork. Cool thing though is you could put it in uh, Beyond Trust or GRC System, Archer, uh, Elkstat. There's a ton of um, GRC platforms you could put it in that makes it easier, right? But when you hit the button and they want to see paper, it's going to be a lot of paper because one of these policies can easily be 15, 20 pages, depending on how you write it, depending on how you separate it. So if you got 20 families at 15 pages, right? You, you know, about 400 pages and you ain't even talked about the technical side and the architecture side, then right. And two is every family has a policy and a procedure, right? We're just looking at the policy, but then the procedure is going to say, how are you automating it? How are you um building it right so when you enter this person and you hit the button for their job function how do you automate it once again going into the database uh putting that person on a, a web app application uh is it in archer is it in teams right what directories are you giving to because when you come on as a team right you get access to certain resources once again they wanted to be automated because if you're doing all that stuff manually right how are you doing it but once again from a policy standpoint your policies dictating that to you and the policy is cool because that's mean it's coming from management so you can always say hey dude this policy is by management it's not me so if you don't do it i'm just gonna run it up the chain because you're about you're um not um following company policies and we all know that you know that's a bad thing even though i'm always in trouble <laughs> i'm always in trouble <laughs> now nah, but those are the, once again, those policy comes from um, your CIO, your CISO, and a lot of times HR, right? So if you don't get those right, you can um, get reprimands or bad checks in your HR. So people are more likely to follow it if it just comes from security or even, even uh, uh, the IT organization, because sometimes people push back. If it comes from, once again, corp corporate or some big company, um, the big part of organization, right? They're, they're going to follow it. So I'm going to hang out. Let me see. I'll drop the link real quick. So once again, I'll bring the policy up and we'll just peek at it a little more. Once again, I hope everybody having a good day. Let me see. I took a little break. So I took a little break. I'll probably get back at it. I've just been a long week. So let me see. I'm going to drop that policy back in there and just highlight it real quick. Once again, I have a, I used to have a bundle when I used to freelance. So I need to get my bundle tight. So like I said, I think I'm going to do that as part 
a part of my membership, you'll get a bundle in the future. So if you want to get in that policy game or if you, you know, you start in your small company, you want a policy. So I think that's in a bundle. Then two is appendix. I need to update. These are all commerce, uh, commerce national, all these 2008, but, and Biden just did the, uh, zero trust, right? So he's telling you, you need to follow these things. So you won't get the government hat. So those are the references. It's again at the bottom. So I need to uh, update those and uh, get a few newer ones out there. Some of the 2007 is kind of old. <laughs> so they let you know the last time I updated them. Uh, they, I know they used to be good because I, I had a couple got reviewed by some some big auditors. So once again, we uh just out here just looking at policies, making uh, the policy game. Uh, like I said, a hidden gem publicly accessible content only designated individuals can post to a publicly authorized a lot of the times for us is uh companies have facebook pages uh, who can update them a lot of times it's just a communication team but who can if you're a company can do that in public because you don't want everybody just posting stuff about your company right so once again your policy so if somebody do something you like right you got it in uh documentation and you can you can reprimand them um Hopefully you're not rapping like access control of mobile devices. Are you letting people put stuff on phones, not on phones? Um, once again, those those things you want. I'll make that a little bigger. Things you want, right? And your um that you want your company to, you know, take care of. Remote access, uh, permitted actions without identifier or authentication. I think that would be zero. I need to look into that. But once again, just going over a few policy things. Hoping everybody having a good good Thursday. I need Friday to get here. Once again, just kind of doing a working session. Uh, I guess next time <laughs> I'll change the policy to match. But once again, we looked at the uh, Anna 53. What's up, Keep It Techie? Salute to Keep It Techie. So once again, that policy game, you know, um, keep it tech, you work for big organizations. You got to have your policies and procedures. And once again, is and I think a lot of people kind of lose perspective. <laughs> Man, I'm being ready for Friday. Is these are your security requirements for your organization, these are the requirements for your uh DBAs, your essays. Shout out to uh Gabe, even your red team, right? These policies are what you put in effect so people know what your company and how your company is doing requirements right so session termination once again sessions on everything from a database web application uh, application server uh active directory uh teams right so everything has a session termination so what is that for your whole company and once again those are the security requirements you're going to give the tech guys right because a lot of times you you know we debate shout out to gabe right gabe's not a steer guy keep it tech he's not a steer guy but what requirements are we using for hardening on the system right stigs roll up to uh nis 800-53 cis rolls up to nis 800-53 right so you can have hardenings that even hardening with different values but they roll up to nis because a lot of times um nis uh, says that on that one 30 minutes but a lot of times it says organizationally defined right so organ organizationally defined is stigs because those organizations came from fisma cis came from irs ferpa and some other organizations so even though those hardenings right they all roll up to NIST and what we were looking at in those 20 families earlier right so those once again where your security requirements come from and i get a lot of small companies asking me what is security how do i know we were secure right once again we can talk about NIS, hipaa high trust but it gives them a compliance to go by to say we are done we know you're never done because you got to do vulnerability pen testing a uh, red team you always looking threat honey but you have a security program right to put you in there Shout out to Lee Mitchell. Let's see what my man got. How would you create a policy for a small business to get on track? 
Uh, I mean, I, do you just plug in policies from this? Uh, we could. Uh, let me show you something real quick. Mix, I know you just joined us. Um, what I would do, if they're doing government work, I would uh, start them off with NIST. But here we were looking at NIST. I, um, if you can see low, medium, and high, I would start them off with low, right, to get them started. And so they're only doing a subset of NIST. So that's how I would get them started, Mitchell. Um, so that brother. So yeah, I would start them with low, Mitchell, to get them started. See, none of that automated stuff's in there yet, because they're small, right? So a lot of stuff they're still doing by hand, but they would need a policy and procedure from a, a account, um, access account. So they know they would have to do accounts. It just wouldn't be automated, but they could have can you create a template automate oh yeah facts um yeah because realistically in uh <laughs> um engineering cannabis 100 because when you're really talking about uh, aws you're really setting up templates but you can have them fire up um automated stuff can you create a template automated policy for yeah because actually that that's what we're looking at that used to be my these are my templates i use let me, I'll show them to you. Uh, Mitchell, let me know if that makes sense. But yeah, we would start them off with the low um, to get them started. And then um, once again, you would just walk through them. Because uh, it's funny you mentioned that, Engineer Kenneth, because I have templates. I'm thinking about switching them and just putting them in AWS. Then once you put your company name and kind of your purpose and some high level stuff, you, you could automatically generate out the template. So I've been actually thinking about that. So um, let me show you my templates. Because, uh, yeah, I've been thinking about doing memberships uh, in cannabis. So I think for my uh, one of my labs is I'm going to put these templates, are my templates that I have for decades. <laughs> I need I want to upgrade them to NIST. But like you said, these are templates. I can put these in AWS then. Put the organizational name and the mission and just generate out the body right you click a couple buttons um like mitchell said are you low medium high kind of what's your architecture then just spit out templates for your architecture right what database you're using and what uh no sql database you're using are you using ec2s or are you using serverless you click a few buttons engineering cannabis and i can just generate these templates out for your business for 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 that particular domain you're in so so it's funny you mentioned that i'm thinking about doing that on my memberships <laughs> i think about doing that on my memberships engineering cannabis <laughs> so i think that's gonna be one of the labs we're gonna work on my memberships <laughs> just building an aws like like you said it's the template and i got the uh you see it right there where it says organizational name type in that type your mission in click kind of your architecture you're using on-prem in the cloud then it just kind of builds these templates and say this is for your company and this is what you could give your auditors and pass right but i always remember policies is what you want to be doing technically you might not be there yet right you might want to be doing mfa tokens but you're doing mfa phones right so the policy is really where you trying to be at so a lot of things you don't have to have it um implemented yet that's what you're going to implement in the future right because policies is where you want to be as a company, right? The procedures is actually what you're implementing for your company. But the policy says, uh, shout out engineering cannabis. We want to do cognitive cybersecurity. We want to do um, blacklist IPs, right? Because there's sites out there that knows all the IPs of the hackers, right? You can get into there, right, and do that. Um, I... <laughs> I, I you're correct i just don't like csf i think it's too small no but like uh jack yak um I, i'm not disagreeing with you i think this csf from a cyber security standpoint does not hit enough of the security families so a lot of times i do not recommend uh this csf i think you need to get your big boy pants on and at least do 853 low um just because I've been in the industry and I'm <laughs> I'm biased like that. But so you're not correct. I just don't, it's so limited. I think it's going to get smaller companies hacked. And most of those businesses are doing trying to do business with the government too. And a lot of those um bigger governments don't even take the CSF. 
once again, I did a lot of work with IRS and they were like, uh, no, you got to do 853. <laughs> so that's the only reason I um, kind of shy away from NIS, NIS CSF, uh, Blackjack, Yak 54. I'm not totally disagreeing you. Um, I just want more security and I think they're lacking from the CSF. And I think they're actually doing a disservice to small business. Just my personal belief. No, no, no shade. We could disagree. I, I just don't like it. So if I'm helping people out, I'll good. Yeah, for me, black. And because if you look, they're they're doing less than a low. And Kaseya's got hit. There's so many. Um, shout out the um, what's the big the big cybersecurity firm got hit. There's so many attacks out there. Um, for me, it's almost negligent, Blackjack. I mean, it's 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 so small. I would just do this 853, start with the low, then say we're trying to get to moderate. Because if we get hacked, at least I could say we're low, we're going to moderate, we're not negligent. These are the things we got in the future. For me, CSF, for me, I just, even I know it's for small business. I would use it for a micro business. Uh, 50 people, 20, probably 25 people and under. Um, just, like I said, I've been in the game for 30 years. I've been doing this for, oh my God, 20. <laughs> so I just, and for me, I just don't believe it's a heavy lift anymore. Um, especially if you're in the cloud and you're going to cloud, Amazon's got most of their stuff and most of their services already at this. It's just how you implement it, Blackjack. So that, that, that's why I kind of believe that, especially if you're small and you, you new, you need to be in the cloud. Anyway, if you're in the cloud, you could pick all the services that are NIST 800 53 modern, and you can just use those services, right? Then the only thing you got to worry about is how you piece them together, right? How do you put your load balancer together? Uh, how are you building your um, public and your private subnets from an architect architecture standpoint? But AWS has that stuff pre-configured. You just got to set it up correctly to make sure you're secure and hard. So that, that's kind of where my my thing on that, Blackjack. And, and I talk to small businesses about them. Um, I'm supposed to do, and that's one thing I'm going to do in my memberships. I'm supposed to help this small hospital. Out the goodness of my heart, I'm charging them just barbecue money of a good friend of mine. So we're going to walk through his policies and procedures. I'll probably do a little bit on that channel and and um, um, <laughs> redact his company name, right? And just kind of, how would you walk through a smart, small hospital and set this up, Blackjack? So uh, once again, I, I do this in real life. <laughs> so uh, Once again, Blackjack, if you want to come up and talk or put some more questions, but that's my beast with CSF. And I'm really not a HIPAA fan. All the small hospitals are getting ran over because their security is not at the level it needs to be at. So once again, my soapbox. Let's see my man engineering cannabis got. I have a checklist with policy first and policy temp and have it packaged up with automatic pack. Now you're hundred percent correct. So I'm um, like I said, I think that's going to be an AWS project for me. Um, I think I'm a, trying to find an open source GRC. Um, Cause when you get to a certain level, you need to put your policies into some um, GRC archers, the big 800 pound gorilla beyond trust. There's a, a couple of open source, uh, this one young guy, he had a uh, he was building a GRC. I liked him, so I was gonna reach out to him and see if I can get a um, a sample version of his and use it and see, uh, kind of give him some hints on it. But you really want to put your policies in a GRC. In a GRC, you got policies. You put your procedure in there. We're gonna talk about this exceptions. We know a lot of times I got a policy, but. I can't put it on this old database. So now I need to write exception to that policy, get it approved by upper management. Now I have a program, right? So we we know we have a risk. We couldn't do it. Rust the risk. The owner of that system did an exception. Security looks over that exception and say, okay, you can't do this, but it's on a private subnet. You make sure you can only VPN. It's least privileged. So we know the risk is small. We know you didn't do this, but we sign off on that. That shows you have a security program. So if you get hacked, that's what the auditors are going to see is you have a program, right? We got policies, procedures. We got exceptions. We got sign off. We got risk assessment. And we're going to start talking about each one of these on a, um, I'm calling these working sessions now, right? We're talking about policies. Next time we're talk talking about exceptions to a policy and how do you document that, get that signed off by leadership and 
and have that sign off by auditing saying you have a security program, right? Because like Lee said is if you're a small company, you just willy nilly. When you do government work or a big security, or you've been on government work, they want you to have a security program. Once again, policies, procedures, exceptions. Poem is just a schedule that I can't do it now, but this is when I can do it. All right. Uh, MOT is a management operation uh, technical check. Right. So you got policies and procedures, um, shredding and all that. We're going to go through each one of these grc um domain so people can what's up you're late <laughs> now nah, i'm just joking so but once again i just want to start touching on small parts of grc and i think policy is basically the um kind of the bedrock right once again it, it's management saying these are our requirements and this is what we want to do as a company right some of that stuff you won't be able to do even though it's in a policy the procedures are going to say what we're doing now Policies say what we're aspiring to to be in the future, right? And a lot, once again, a lot of times I do security review for vendors that want to come in certain organizations. Um, so when I look at your um, company, your system security plan, these are the things I want to see. So I know you has you have a program for your company. You're not going to get us hacked, right? Policy like my policy. You can't hack a policy, but a policy can tell you the maturity of an organization. I can look at a policy and say, okay, this is a mature guy. They got 25 and they're good, or this three dudes in a garage and they have no idea what they're doing, right? So once again, I tell the boss, hey, that's kind of risky, man. That's PBO and two dudes in a the garage. They don't know what they're doing, right? But two, as I work, I did an assessment on a billion dollar company. They didn't have any six uh, encryption behind the fire, behind the load balancer. I'm like, dude, <laughs> y'all not very secure, even though y'all a big company. But this, what the policy a lot of times helps you see into that when you do security reviews, right? Let's see, is there a drawn out roadmap for Scott companies that this robot will change over time? Um, yeah, because a lot of times is, and I bring when I looked at that, you would go from uh, low to moderate. And the roadmap will be what you'll be at. Let me bring that up real quick. So the roadmap, and I do a lot of roadmaps, especially for small companies. I'm doing a roadmap for somebody, <laughs> like I said, helping them out is. So the roadmap will be low, right, is where we start. Two is how do we get to moderate, right? So we might do AC1 would be the start. We might do one, two, and three in uh all in 2024 and 2025 will be four and five right but that's once again is your poem and that's your roadmap we start out low because you got to budget this stuff right a lot of this stuff is not free and this stuff could be expensive so you as a program is gonna say when you can implement this on your roadmap and two is how much is gonna cost because your cio and your ceo is gonna be like dude this is two million dollars you can't do all of this right we're going to aws no you're not that's two million you <laughs> right it's too expensive so like engineering cannabis said you will build your roadmap of which one of these you can implement and when you can right some of these are going to be easy to click a button some of these are going to be money some of these could be a new database and you got to do a conversion and an upgrade and you're going to need to hire an outside vendor right but like engineering cannabis ass that's how you build your roadmap and you as a security consultant and like i said when i get my memberships we're going to be working on how to get you into that level right you can sit down with a company and it's called scoping right and we're going to talk about that too is the scope is which one of these can you do at a certain time frame and how much it can cost and some things are a bigger bang for the buck some things you could click a button and be way more secure one of the cheapest things you can do, especially when you're in the cloud, is MFA. You click a button on AWS, you MFA. You can do, a, a, I think it's the Cisco one. I think it's $3 a user. They give you a token, go to your phone, way more secure. Now, we done seen the golden sand mail where you can break MFA, but you at the top of the pyramid of hackers, right? So some of these things, once again, you could be cheaper and click a button, right? But your policy is going to walk through, like you said, what's your roadmap? So if you're a small company, I'll say, what lows can you do? Then two is what part of the moderate can you do? Then we'll say, okay, that's what we're going to do in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. 
this is how much it's going to cost once again when you work for companies how long is it going to take what's the cost and what's my risk mitigation right is this ten thousand going to make me 30 percent more secure or this ten thousand going to make me one percent more secure right so you as a consultant those are things you need to be telling your your client shout out to gabe he he on that director level <laughs> pbo is just an individual contributor now <laughs> yeah so let me know if that makes sense engineering cannabis but yeah so that's how i sit down with companies or smaller companies and i used to i'm too i'm tired but now nah, so when you sit down with smaller companies but two is sometimes people be skimping on that budget right so a a lot tech <laughs> security is not free right and just the time of getting people migrated and moved over right is is, is a, a whole nother thing so So once again, I, I hang out a little longer, see if you got any questions in the box. But no, so that's how you work with smaller companies. And um, once again, it sounds harder. I would tell small companies, pick Azure or, or uh, AWS or Google or Oracle or Rackspace. A lot of their services are already NIST 800 53. You just have to configure them, right? So you don't have to uh, buy a VPN. You could use cisco vpn with aws click a button it automatically provision meaning they put their phone in you sign off on it you get your token on your phone you sign up you're mfa already right a lot of stuff is pre-built in there right so you can have all your privileged users that are uh system administrators on linux Shout out to Keep It Techie. You can have them MFA every time they go on a Linux box to the uh, command line, right? Because those <laughs> those are kind of privileged. Because if you hack them, a lot of times you got root on that box, right? So you want to MFA for the essays, and you could just say this MFA can only get to these Linux boxes. They can't get to any databases. They can't get to any S3 buckets. The only thing you can add, man, is uh. Um, Amazon EC2s on these particular subnets, right? That's least privilege, right? We were looking at the least privilege, least privilege policy. So that's how you get it from a technical level and where you get those um, requirements from. Learn kind of sir. I learn service remotes that collect data, build algorithm. No, that's cool. I, I've like I said, I've heard of it from an once again, Amazon and Azure, they have those um uh services set up to help you do that i think aws is, was called i think copilot was the uh azure one right so they look into your logs and they learn about your organization and what they believe are the known hacks from that particular um type of attack from a miter attack so a lot of times amazon pre and we talked about that engineer <laughs> can amazon pre builds that you don't get to handle the model theoretically they help you with the model so um those big companies are trying because two engineer you know they're gonna charge you extra for that <laughs> it's gonna cost a lot so yeah so uh i know once again aws has theirs uh i'm sure azure has theirs so but two is like you said it's a it's a growing field and they're getting better at it but because i know if you use sentinel for azure they have a built-in uh artificial intelligence in, in sentinel to look through their look through their logs and kind of figure out like you said from from that type of learning and attacks on their logs um because they're taking stuff from all their customers learning stuff then they push like you said that cognitive learning whatever they learn down to all their other customers and they charge you an arm and a leg for it but it's it's the best of the breed right so that's what we need to get to I guess I need to do a stream on that so I can make sure I got that down. Shout out to Engineering Cannabis. He's always on the um, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Uh, you got a wrench? Let me see if my man got a wrench on there. Drop your channel on there, Engineering Cannabis. Go check out A and A I and M E. I've been looking at some of his videos. Make sure you go out and subscribe to him. I would say subscribe to Keep It Techie, but I get most of my subs from Keep It Techie. <laughs> Shout out to him. So he's sharing me. He always take care of the old dudes. Keep It Techie be sharing my stuff, helping the old people out. And my little channel grow, man, trying to get a little barbecue money. <laughs> Once again, put a, put any questions in the chat. 
Let's see. I'm gonna hang out and let's see if Engineer Cannabis put his channel in there. He's uh definitely the uh artificial intelligence machine learning SME from MySpace in here. I always send people to him, right? I'm 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 aware of it. I dabble in it. I know what services does it, but I'm not doing it right. I just picked the service and configure it right. And we, we're gonna talk about that in the future. Like I said, that's more on the uh technical side. We're gonna hang out on the GRC a little longer, get some more policies. Next week, we probably uh, talk about procedures and poems, what that looks like in real life. Once again, I just wanted to um, touch base on GRC. I think it's a uh, hidden gem. I think a lot of people are trying to get into um, cybersecurity. And I think, I won't say easier, but that's just a, a different domain, knowledge, and different talent. Not as technical, um, more of a kind of like that PM world. I always put project management, uh, policy writers kind of together, um, management um, uh, policy, once again, coming from management, getting that detail, making sure it gets signed every three years, a uh, year for procedures. Once again, that's um, what a security program is based on, right? And that's kind of the topic. I think, I'm not saying we get lost, I think that's the next level, um, which, getting the smiths how you get paid we talk about dbas we talk about cloud we talk about um uh sims we talk about each silo but your security programs has to communicate that because in the end when you look at the sim you got to be able to trace it through your whole organization right and to get that in the logs is really what the policy is going to tell you we looked at it, what you need to audit right make sure your time is synced Right. So your time is not off. So you can trace that transaction through your whole organization. Right. Because you got a company firewall, a firewall at the EC2, a firewall at the database. So you should be able to track each one of those coming through in your logs. And so if you get hacked or something gets changed or something gets sent out. Oh, shout out to Master IT. Go check my man out. He definitely had great content. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Of the way, <laughs> so shout out to Master IT. Check him out. Definitely good content. I always see him on uh, sharing his stuff on Facebook. He probably don't know my real government name, but I'll be sharing him on Facebook. He's doing uh, master work on Facebook, so um, he's definitely uh, one of the guys. So go check him out. Does he got a? Could you spam more? Uh oh, let's see, Lee. Let's see over there. I appreciate Master IT. We're going to get that going on the barbecue, even though I need to be going on a diet. But shout out to that. It's definitely going, <laughs> definitely going on a barbecue. Let's see what my man said. Uh, can you spam more on GRC platform and Archer? Yeah, we, we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, when you talk about GRC policies, procedures, um, exception reporting, risk ledgers, there's so much stuff. A lot of times we were actually putting our vulnerabilities into a GRC platform. The GRC platform, like anything, you could keep databases and uh, data in Excel, but when you put it in a database, right, you can query more, report on it more, link it together, make it useful. So Lee Mitchell, that's the same thing with Archer. So in Archer, and I probably, I think I can get a free use for with minimal records in there for three months. So um, in Archer, I will put the policy. The policy would, um, then I could link my procedure to that policy. Then inside that um, procedure in there, I could have an inventory of all my servers and workstations, right? So when I have a vulnerability, right? I could put my vulnerability in Archer on that inventory then that inventory i could put the policy of that vulnerability what it's violating or if i couldn't harden a, a database that i had in archer i could say this policy is in violation on that database and this um exception of this policy here's the poem of when we fix it right so if not lee we keeping all that stuff in uh spreadsheets so um, you would have all your inventory in there, and then you could say, okay, 
I'm supposed to have encryption at, at AS256 on this database. It's not supported. So I can say, this is my exception on this database that's in Archer. The exception is for this policy we're supposed to do in right? Because that's what auditors want to see. And this is the dollar amount of how much it's going to cost to fix because they want to see that you have money. Then on that fix, this is the schedule when I can fix it. So on Archer, I can link all that together. Uh, Lee, if not, you could do it in spreadsheets. It's just a little hard. Let me know if that makes sense. So the uh, GRC platform, Archer's, they had a pound gorilla. It's super expensive. But once again, it, it's one place where I can look up everything. So if I'm an auditor, I can say, okay, some of your exceptions, Archer say, these are exceptions. I can click on exception and say, oh, this exception is violating this encryption. This encryption was said it was done on this policy. Here is the poem, which is the schedule when they're going to get it fixed. Boom. Did it get fixed? Right. So all that's in one place. Right. If not, you, it's just OK, cool. You you keep in spreadsheet. Hell, and, and a lot of times is from a small company perspective. I probably actually do some spreadsheets. Like I said, that's going to be my uh, my membership. I think I gave you a rich master RT if you want to drop your uh, channel in there. Go check out uh, Master IT. Like I said, he's got an online school. Shout out to him. Um, I've, I've looked at it from afar. I know he's uh, from the military. I've talked to him, so I know he knows what he's talking about. So go check him out. He's definitely one of our uh, resources around here. Uh, but yeah, Lee, so that's from a um, compliance standpoint. You always want to um, try to get it into a central place. But I know rather medium-sized companies still doing on spreadsheet because in the spreadsheet i could say here's my inventory in the column i can i can drop um here's my exception and the exception it could be point to the exceptions for this policy right uh this policy and exception uh poem when we plan to fix it right then at that a lot of times once it says it's fixed the auditor is going to go to that system and say hey do you got your new encryption on it you are at 128 you need to be at 1,024. I need to see the screenshot of you actually fixing that exception that got put in. Right? For some reason, we couldn't cut it on because it was going to break something. We have to upgrade the OS or maybe we were on a, a, a lower um, operating system that we need to get it up. Shout out to a client trying to see Master IT can drop it. Maybe he cut. He might have just tipped it. <laughs> cut out, Clay. I don't know. He, he might have cut out sometime. Uh, but once again, um, I'm staying around any questions. So yeah, Lee from a, and we're gonna look at that um, from a spreadsheet perspective in the future, and actually from a, a GRC. Once again, I think I, I think I can get a a free smaller version of Archer to run a little bit. Then two is I'm gonna try to always do an open source version of something. That's pretty good if you're a small company, right? You can spin it up yourself or spin it up in AWS and just pay a small fee to host it. So I like to do the big and uh, small on that league because I know, look, um, like everybody else, it's hard out here sometimes. <laughs> just Google him. He's, uh, if you go to Facebook and do Master IT, he's all over Facebook. He has a Facebook group. So if, just go out and reach out to him on Facebook. Um, I think he has a, obviously he has a YouTube channel too. Just re, if you go to his about page, but reach out to him on Facebook. He he has a ton of, he has a ton of advertisement. I know he has a group. Then if not, reach out to me at uh, professorblackops at gmail.com. I can uh, try to link you out to it. But yeah, just reach out to him on Facebook. Like I said, he's always on Facebook around. But yeah, so I'm going to hopefully do... Um, a GRC program, I'm probably going to do probably three or four more of these at different levels. Then we're going to see what it actually looks like in a, a GRC. I'll create a, a risk register, register. I'll do an inventory. I'll do policies. I'll do a sub policy. Uh, policy is, this is a corporation policy, right? From corp. You as a division might say, uh, we can't do that corporation. We doing this uh, sub policy. Right, so you can do uh, policies and a secondary policy. Right, then two is once again we do the inventory, the policy, the exception that what you uh, do an exception to the policy. Two in there usually we try to do a, a dollar amount. 
it's called a control board or people want to show that you uh put numbers with it so you can actually do it then on on top of that the poem when you plan on getting it done and the poem usually lists is the um, the cvs what you're trying to fix and when you're going to fix it right and a lot of times it could be a lot of times we put uh 10 poems on one poem because there's 10 things on the database we need to fix right so you don't need a separate poem you say we're gonna fix these 10 things i'm an oracle i got on an oracle database between here and here these are the uh six things we're gonna fix and upgrade right from our poem to make from our policy so we can be in compliant right and that's what a grc system look like So I'm gonna hang out a little minute. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um, like I said, I got a nice little crowd, so I probably do a little working group around four, probably maybe three times a week. Um, just kind of build up, and we do GR City, and we'll put it all together and talk about all of these as a security program, right? Oh yeah, I've been sharing. I don't know. I don't know. I um, he's been uh, supporting me for a while, so I actually been sharing his content. Yeah, because he's I think he only has a hundred subs. So which surprised me because he has a good con he has a lot of good content, but sometimes it's hard to just get get um get your subs up and just get out of here and just keep running, right? No, I do like Wire Dog. Like I said, I've been sharing his content. Um, like I said, he's been so important to me. So I've I've been trying to share most of his stuff because he I think he put some out yesterday. I was gonna uh, share it today. I was kind of I share it one sometimes I kind of let it breathe a little bit a lot of times I don't want to um as we say in the sock world you just get keep getting alerts you get tired of looking at stuff so but now I do like why because he's definitely on the hack me side yeah which I'm not I always call that red team I'm more a blue team I want to harden my stuff so hard he can't hack it so um what I might do though is reach out to him we might do a red team blue team I've been talking to Gabe about that forever. So I harden some and they see if they can hack it, right? So I put on Amazon and uh, give them the API and see if they can hack in and steal the data. So we probably do a um, red team, blue team. Um, me, him, Gabe, um, maybe keep it techie, tighten up the Linux. So I mean, so that's kind of one of the things I, I want to do in the future. Let's see. Yeah, he, I, yeah, I've been sharing his stuff. He, when I looked, I think he had 124. So I, I think he's been, uh, yeah, no. Nah. So yeah, I've been sharing his stuff because I know when I first started trying to get to a thousand and get monetized, man, that was brutal. <laughs> so now nah, I've definitely been sharing this stuff. I like when I see people kind of grinding, especially they've been so supporting me. So I, that's kind of my goal. Like each month, I want to support somebody and just kind of share their stuff and kind of reach out to other people and see if they can share. <laughs> so. I got contacts with a few of the bigger guys, so so now nah, so that's kind of my one of my things as a as an OG because I be I'm 55. <laughs> my job is to help other younger guys, so now nah, so I'm definitely sharing wire dog stuff this month. So that's kind of been one of my things I said I was going to do, um, help smaller guys. I I'm I'm probably pretty sure I'm older than him, but just help younger guys because I know this YouTube grind is is vicious. Um, like I said, I'm sure I probably bring him on and um, interview him, um, collab with him, trying to introduce him to my my small, you know, two thousand people. Um, see if I can, you know, help him grow. <laughs> I appreciate it, yeah, man. I try to help people out, man. Number one, as um, that's just one thing. I wanted to do when I came to YouTube. I'm a little older, so I really came here to help people, right? If I make a little barbecue money, I'm cool, but I really came here to help people. So I'm in uh Kev Tech. I'm Miles in his just I work for Kev Tech on his Discord. I gotta do a little more for Keep It Techie on his. Kev Tech gave me my own little channel, little sub channel. So I'm always posting whatever I post. I post it in his and I'll be uh, answering questions in Kev Tech's channel. Um so so yeah, so I'm always trying to, you know, help people. Shout out to um, my man, Master IT, because I know he came from the military. I know he's grinding. So i his stuff is good. Tech G, uh, Black Heights. So I, I've got a guys, you know, shout out to uh <laughs> engineering cannabis. He's definitely machine learning. 
So I'm sure we're going to do some collaborations because I know his AI and, and me trying to help his channel grow. So uh, I'm, I usually try to do at least some uh, once a month on cloud AI and um, machine learning because logs are so big now. Oh, that's really machine learning, artificial intelligence. So definitely going to collaborate with him on that. Salute to game over. So, yeah, so I try to make sure I shout out. I'll be on other people's shout people channels, shout people out because their channels be much bigger than mine. So, yeah, I'm. I'm an OG. I, you know, I try to stay in my lane. So, but I do try to give people shout outs on bigger channels, man, because that's how you grow. And I think um, this sector's tech needs to be bigger. I think that needs to be a focus. Um, it's seven percent. I would really like to get that to ten or even fifteen, where people get in there. We know the main cause, and that's one thing I'm gonna work on this summer is gatekeeping. Right? How can I help people do policy reviews and cloud reviews give them something to put on their resume to look like a big enough project where that can be counted as experience so people can get hired right i just did a video where they were talking about cybersecurity short they said i thought it was 800 they said it was 1.3 million cybersecurity openings right well if you got 1.3 million we should have more people in the pipeline right so why are these people getting blocked, right? What are you looking for, right? That's why I did my women in Linux. Let's look at Indeed. Let's see what they're looking for on these job descriptions so we can do projects and hopefully get those to count as experience to help people get in. Because once you get in, you can roll. It's just getting in. So, But you got 1.3 million job openings, but you're not letting people get in, right? So that's perplexing to me um some of it's not perplexing i mean some of it we know what it is right so but once again i think if you work on your craft and we give you those bullet points to put on your resume give you i was showing you a policy template give you a policy procedure so you can so this is what i've done in real life right this is the projects you know once again i'm supposed to be helping a guy um, from a small hospital, do some policies, procedures. I'm sure we're going to talk about cloud. Do that as a real project to help people get experience, right? So they could put that on their resume, right? So that can help them get a job, right? So so we need, I don't, I don't want to say defeat the, <laughs> defeat the gatekeepers, but we need to make sure people are getting the correct skills um, and the experience, right? People could we we saw that one was a junior fair ramp. They wanted a master's degree and three years of experience. I'm like, dude, that, that's not an entry level position. Maybe that's entry level for fair ramp. So I think one thing we need to figure out is across the board, what is entry level? Right. Sometimes I think we just making and uh shout out to Kev Tech. He talked to this a lot of them. Entry should be zero experience right that's why it's entry i mean you can say three years you just need to put that that's not entry though right we need to put that in the moderate experience or higher experience it shouldn't be entry right so i think we need to figure out what entry is entry should be zero to one or zero to two right but if you got enough labbing enough experience for your lives where you can show that you can do the work right you should be able to get in there and um be able to show what you can do right My, my two cent, but I think that's all I got. I was really going for an hour. I went for an hour and a half. You know, PBO can talk all day. <laughs> so uh, tomorrow's Friday. I want everybody to have a good Friday. Y'all going to see me online. I think I'm going to start doing these working sessions. We're going to kind of build them up into a program, build them up as we put them in the GRC and link those together, right? Man, I'm sorry to hear that, man. So keep grinding, man. You just need one. You're going to get them, man. The cool thing, though, is is um, you, there's a lot, so many job openings. Did you get a, uh, you get any feedback, casual? Did they say what you were lacking on? Um, a lot of times I see, you know, kind of what you're lacking on. Um, it's hard out here. Like I said, I, um, I was at a consulting company for a while. Not a while. I was there for 10 years then. The client didn't renew me, so... I interviewed for a ton of jobs before I got one, cause we got them, and I got experience. I think some though they thought they said I was overqualified. One said I, you know, I, they thought I was asking for too much money. So trying to figure out where you fit, casual. Don't get 
don't get discouraged. Like I said, I, I was humping for a minute when I switched, right? So um it, it's it's crazy. Lacking experience. I'm trying to fast track to the money. <laughs> no, nah, I'm feeling you. So yeah, that's one of my big things. Shout out to casual economists. Is what can we do lab wise or project wise? So you could put on your resume so you can have you had so you can show that you have experience in. I don't know what particular job you were trying to get, but I think that's one thing we need to do a better shout out that shout out to you. Thanks for coming through, man. I think casual, that's what this summer I'm gonna need to try to figure out that with some other guys. Um Theo, keep it techy, tech G. Master IT, I think we need to put together. What's up, Chaos Ring? I think we need to put together a big project so we can uh, get you some experience and actually run it like a project, Casual Economist. Between me, Gabe, Keep It Techie, Tech G, um, Master IT, we got enough experience and work in corporate America where we can actually do a big enough project so it could count on as experience. So I think. I think I think that's something we need to figure out, casual casual economists. I think that's what we're lacking in this space. I think we got a lot of, which is not bad, and a lot of it's good material, but it's all siloed, right? We got the A plus, the security plus, the network plus. Then we got the uh, GRC. Shout out to Simply Cyber. Then we got the uh, shout out to Keep It Ticket. We got the Linux, but we need to do somewhere. You build all that stuff in a project to say, this is what I did. Because when you run stuff in a production-like <laughs> environment, that's when the bugs come out. That's when you figure stuff out. It could be a memory leak, and you don't find out for a couple of weeks till the memory stop working, right? But hope, So those are the things I think we need to do as a place on YouTube. And uh, each one of the tech guys kind of need to do a master project and we know you, you do those in college right where you do your uh, master project or your your ending project where you put two or three things together right from different classes to show that you mastered it so i think that's what we need to do <laughs> i'm working on a brother Mike. That's, why, that's it and that's what casual and i think that's what everybody's having problems with right so how do we do that right and there's enough I'm I don't I'm not saying siloed in a bad way, but Kiba Techie's got the Linux, right? I got the GRC in the cloud. Uh Will's all in the cloud, right? Uh women in Linux, they got the cloud. She's got the uh Docker, what's the other one? Kubernetes, right? But how do you run that as a security program? Spin it all up, um, fund it, um, do the policies, procedures, do the compliance checking, uh, make sure the Kubernetes is this 800-53, right? And, and how do you, what's up, EQ? I'm ending it. You came at the end, but I'm glad you joined me. Just check out the replay. I, I need to do a better job of scheduling them out a couple of days so they can actually reach that. Yeah, I fucked up. <laughs> I fully in the tech. Oh, yeah. Tech is where to be, man. I love econ's my first love, but I feel like unless you a PhD, you can't make money in econ. I love econ, man. I just better at tech. <laughs> I just better because I a lot of people most I don't know, probably half of y'all know I got an MBA, right? Because I'm I I used to manage people and supervise people, and I started my own consulting company in 2005. <laughs> so didn't go well, but I might change my name. <laughs> I like that. Guy. I like that, man. You should you should hyphenate it at first, casual. Let us ease into it. Casual slash economics technology. Then just take the economics off, right? Ease us into it with the dash. Now I'm just playing. But now that's it once again. Uh, and I think these two, brother Michael and, and casual economists, is running into um, gatekeeping, right? Um, where if you're putting in work and you understand, I think people should get a chance, right? But they want you to have experience, but you got 1.3 million people opening. You got to get somebody a chance, right? Just on labs and, and their um, willingness to learn, right? Um, you Even at an entry level, you got to take a chance on somebody. So I think we need to figure out once again, how to do some bigger projects so people can put those on, on their um, resume. 
I would count it as experience and hopefully we call them artifacts or things or um, GitHub where you can go and um, <laughs> appreciate it game mode. I got to Like I said, I need this, my, my Xbox. You got to start talking and putting it into effect. Right. So I need to start reaching out to these guys and I need to reach out to AWS and see if they have a lot of things where they, where they help people see if I can get a, um, I won't say small, a bigger thing that subsidizes them so we can run some DevSecOps, we can run DevOps, we can run compliance, we can run every bit of a, a technology infrastructure, including security, in a, or Azure or both. Actually, both. I think we need to go multi-cloud. Shout out to women in Linux. Go check them out. She's always talking about the multi-cloud. I need to start thinking multi-cloud. I'm in my AWS hat. <laughs> that's my bailiwick that's where i pushed out my marbles in but that's one thing i need to start kind of drawing up and seeing how we can actually do that in real life and do it for super cheap like maybe ten dollars a month put that on my membership and kind of figure that out um like i said i need to kind of start scoping that out um see if i can get a grant or something i don't want no big aws bill i want to run the big stuff like we running a big company i want to have like 20 Linux VM spun up, man, and you um, doing DevOps, meaning you building them with automation, right? And you tearing them down with automation, and you got auto scaling groups automatically doing that, right? And then we can actually use Postman or or and um, force traffic there to spin them up. Then shout out to y'all. We can do threat hunting. Uh, we can have Gabe run a red team test for that side. We can have a blue team trying to defend it. We could be looking at the logs, looking at the attacks coming in and see what's blocked and what's getting through. I think that's the stuff we need to do to help people get jobs, right? It's cool to get a cert, right? But they want you to have experience and some time under your belt or some big projects where you can say, see, come to my GitHub, come check check what I built. Here's the, um, the script of how I build it with automation. Here is the DevSecOps. This is where we were scanning, blah, 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 blah. But now that's it. And I just need to figure out, shout out to Brother Michael uh, and Casual Economist for being transparent. You know, it's it's hard to get in these um, jobs and, and get the big bag. Shout out to Women in Linux, 300,000. Black Heights, 300,000, right? But we got to get in the door first before we get to 300. If this is the first time I'm seeing this in a oh in this level of detail. You it's being done. Someone who specializes in it. I appreciate it, Black Jack. Um, I don't want to have to go see my man uh combo courses. He uh talks a lot about this. He actually has courses, he's a little on he's good. His courses are a little expensive, but check him out and uh check out simply cyber. Um, he's a doctor, he has a doctorate from uh the citadel. I follow him a lot, so I don't there's a few other people out here, but yeah. Uh, and two blackjack, I've got. Oh, sure. If you go to my um homepage, I actually have a compliance uh playlist, and then there's this 853 CMC is this this four. So I probably have at least five or six videos on this. Once again, for y'all, I don't know. I worked at the Department of Revenue with the IRS. I did this for ten years. I worked at DOD. That did FISMA and I did NIST out there. I was a supervisor of a web team. We used to spin up uh, Apache and Tomcat for Java. So I used to have to spin that up hard nose under NIST and uh, it's called Sticks. Shout out to Gabe. He doesn't like Sticks, but that's hardening. So that's kind of what I want to bring it to the channel. But yeah, if you go out, um, yeah, just check it out. You'll see it if you scroll down like halfway down. You will see uh, I got a compliance. My goal really is to touch on all the compliance. I did NIS, HIPAA, high trust, PERPA. Uh, there's one for pharmaceutical companies. I'm going to do Marzies, which is really for uh, child welfare. And there's a couple more I want to do. I want to be kind of versed in the, the major um, compliances. I, I help people with a lot of compliance work. Um, NIS, HIPAA, FERPA for education. So I at least want to have an understanding. Most of them are pretty much the same when you learn one. But once again, um, I was helping a guy with a pharmaceutical company do some work on one. So that's kind of where I, it's called GXP. The P is for it's called Good Pharmaceutical Standards. And the X stands for 
tech, uh, uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing. So yeah, so yeah, I've done a few of those. Yeah. Check them out. And then once again, if you have any questions on them, just jump on a, on a live. And I, I probably go live at least once a week. I'm trying to get to go back to two or three. I've just been busy and unwinding and tired, to be honest. But once again, check me out. I appreciate the support. Let me get out of here. I was only up for we almost all here for iron 41. But now I enjoy it. Like I said, uh, I've done this for almost 20 years. I've done it at a high level. Um, once again, when I worked, uh, the IRS used to come in and review our NIST setups. Used to boo, it used to be Booz Allen. So I've actually been audited on the stuff we did for Nick's. Uh, I worked on the team and I, I've interviewed a couple of those people on my channel. Um, so I worked with CISOs, CIOs, uh, compliance directors, uh, security architect, um, CTOs. I'm a view, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, uh, uh, interview, uh, old CTO. We used to get into it, right? My security was breaking his architecture, right? So, I always joked. He said, why would you interview me? I said, because we got to figure out how your design is going to work with my technology. And sometimes we disagreed and we had to go to the CIO, right? And the CIO had to make a decision on if he wanted less security, more security or different security, right? So I, I don't get mad. But once again, that's just different levels of security. When you get in the game, you and the CTO going at it. <laughs> uh, but once again, uh, Thanks for joining me. I'm about to go probably get a little barbecue. Shout out to um, Master IT. I'm going to highlight this, a little tin. This tin. Now I ain't going to call it little because that's the only one I got. Shout out to his tin. Well, 10K on the way. Yep, I'm trying to get to five, really. I'm on two trying to get to five. But now I appreciate everybody. Um, once again, if you need to email me, professorblackops at gmail.com. You can go to my YouTube page and check out my about. There's a checkbox you got to click so you can see it. Shoot me an email. The other thing uh, most people know, a few people don't, is I taught for 10 years at a community college, so I get two days to answer your email. <laughs> so th those were the college rules, so I go by it. Sometimes I just get busy and forget. So I get 48 hours to answer your email as a as an ex-professor. And some of that teaching, if you once again, too, if you look on my um, page, I got introduction to cybersecurity and introduction to cyber forensics. I just taught it as a kind of a lecture like I used to do uh, when I taught 10 years at a community college. Once again, I'm out. Everybody have a good day. Uh, you'll see me on these cybersecurity streets. I always thank everybody for uh, support, <laughs> and I appreciate you. Everybody have a good night. I'm out of here. TGIF.